It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of February 16th, 2001. we got three movies to look at today, so let's just go ahead and jump on an end. We'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend. That is Chris Rock in Down to Earth. That's Barton may have died. What is this place? This just happened. But he won't take it lying down. I want a body now. Now, Mr. Wellington. I've got a body. Better recognize. He's coming back to live the highlight. Even if it belonged to someone else. Hey, I got a good job. Chris Rock. Give me a walk. Down to earth. Are you sure I won't die for 40 years? Technically, yes. But with PG-13. But this body's just a loner. Starts Friday, February 16th. So Down to Earth is actually a remake of the classic 1978 film Heaven Can Wait, which starred Warren Beatty, which in turn was actually based off of a stage play of the same name. And in here, it's basically kind of the similar story. Chris Rock plays this comedian who's killed in before his time on Earth is through, and he's given another chance to continue his life, but in the body of a middle-aged white man. And, um, and of course, hilarity ensues from there. Um, for the most part, the movie is fine, I guess, but... You know, when you have a guy like Chris Rock at this time of his career, more edgier than he used, than he is nowadays, you expect a whole lot more from this movie. And sadly, the movie really does not deliver on that, unfortunately. I mean, yeah, there are times when the jokes can work, and sometimes it can be really funny. Plus, there is a good enough cast that can hold up the load for the most part. I mean, in addition to Rock, you see Eugene Levy in there, uh, Jennifer Coolidge, both from American Pie, which coincidentally, this is directed by the duo behind American Pie, specifically Paul Weitz, who directed American Pie, but Chris Weitz also uh, worked on that film. But this was his first time as a director on a project, and they later go on to direct different projects. To direct other movies after this point. But in addition, you have Regina King, Mark Addy, Frankie Faison, uh, Chaz Palmin Terry, Wanda Sykes, John Cho, Thelma Hopkins. Um, a good cast overall in general. And there are moments, brief moments, where there are funny moments to this film, but they are very few and far between. There's not a whole lot of jokes overall that are really that funny or that enjoyable. And the, the story elements here. Excuse me. Uh, the story elements here do kind of fall into predictable, cl cliched comedy territory, and it really does not really add up in the, in the long run. The moments that should be funny in this movie really are not, and it struggles big time because of it. And for that, it's overall, I thought the movie overall was a real letdown, considering everything that was going on board with this, with, in terms of the script, in terms of the like cast and all that, and the direction and all that. But overall, the movie definitely is a big misfire in the long run. I mean, it's a film that really does not work on a whole number of different levels, and it's just kind of like, you expect so much more from it with everything that's going forward in terms of, like, the casting and the writing and the direction and all that, but it just never really goes there. It just kind of comes and goes, and it's just like, it was literally nothing but when it's all said and done. It's a real letdown of a film the more I think about it. It does make me laugh every once in a while, but not enough for me to say that it's one you should definitely check out, unfortunately, so... So that's down to earth, so let's go ahead and move on to our next movie, and that is Recess Schools Out. Attention students, this is Principal Brinkley talking. I want to inform you all that I have a fat, saggy butt, which I like to scratch every hour on the out. Get ready for a Recess movie so big. Why, Principal Brinkley, sir, what a surprise. It takes a theater to hold it. That's some of the kids, the ultimate recess. They thought school was over. Get right there! Get right there! That's cold! But the mystery was just beginning. Ah! I am gonna get rid of recess. No! Mom! Mom! <clears throat> TJ, are you all right? Those guys in the school, they're doing some kind of evil experiment. That bonk on the head must have rattled your little brain. But, Mom! You're feverish. You wait right here. I'll go get the baby thermometer and the petroleum jelly. <gasps> okay, that right there, that was messed up. Now, they're going to save the world, one playground at a time. Get off our planet, alien scum! Ninjas! I'm stuck! Curse these bodacious hips of mine! Randall, run back to my place and get the butter! That part still grosses me out, sir. <laughs> get him! It's a recess unlike any you've ever experienced. Psychedelic Prince of It's party time. The Born Man! On February 16th, Recess will never be the same again. We're going in. And no running in the halls. Recess schools out. Yay! 
DJ, did you run into the sliding glass door again? Yeah! Come back! Your mom's gonna want to take your temperature! So yeah, out of all the animated shows that were on TV back then to make a movie out of, Recess seems like one of the weirder ones to do it with. I mean, it's a simple story in general. It's just kids at a school, and then they have these adventures that go on in the playground during recess and during the school day, among other things in particular. You don't think there's really a knot there that could handle a feature-length motion picture, but I guess it was successful enough that Disney basically said, yeah, this is successful enough that we can make a movie off of this, but then again, they made a movie of Teacher's Pet not but a couple years later, and nobody really remembers Teacher's Pet, the TV series. The movie, on the other hand... You might be surprised. We'll eventually get to that one later on. But let's talk about uh, recess schools. Uh, you basically have the five kid, the six kids in there: T.J., Vince, Ash, uh, Spinelli, Gretchen, Mikey, Gus. They finally have finished fourth grade at Third Street School, but boredom quickly sets in when T.J.'s friends leave for camp um, until T.J. uncovers an evil plot to do away with summer vacation. A crazy former principal, played by James Woods, is planning to use a laser beam that he stole from the U.S. military base to alter the weather and create permanent winter. Naturally, TJ rallies his friends together and they conspire to fight the wicked doctor, but in order to take turns it, or, it turns out that the doctor is so strict that he wants to change the orbit of the moon in order to put the nation in a constant freeze, thus putting an end to summer, creating a year-round school year, and it's up to them to, only them to save the world for kids all over the world. And as I said before, Recess was one of the quintessential shows from one Saturday morning back in the day. So I guess maybe it makes sense to make a movie, but as far as TV adaptations go, it's kind of what you'd expect from a movie like this. I mean, you get a big epic adventure for these characters, but it still carries a lot of the wit and charm that the original series has. And this movie definitely has a lot of that. A lot of the wit and charm. It's a pretty impressive animation from this company, Sunwoo Animation. They did a lot of the animation for the Rugrats movies, as well as the Wild Thornberries movies. So it does give it a little bit of an epic look to it compared to the original TV series. And like I said, you can't go wrong without having James Woods as your villain. And it does have a nice little story about the about like the adults in this movie, especially like Principal Prickly and uh, you know the, the adults there who who like yeah they tr they treat the kids like like they should like any school would, but they also were kids at one point too. And I like they flash back to a time when they were kids as well, and they understood the importance of something like you know the importance of having a summer vacation and having a childhood and all that. And the the movie overall does give you that epic big screen feel to it. There's nothing too groundbreaking about it, but it keeps a lot of what makes the original series special and adds impressive elements to it and an upgraded animation budget to it. And I think anybody who loves the original Recess series definitely will get a kick out of this movie. But other than that, if you're not too familiar with the show, you might find something to it, but I think it's more for the people that are fans of the show. I was one of those people that grew up with it when I was on Disney Channel and Toon Disney a lot, so I know more about it than I think mo most people who wouldn't know th about this series would know about it. So, I would, so overall, I do really enjoy the show and the movie as well. But like I said, if you're a newcomer to this, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's something that you shouldn't avo that you should avoid. Like, what am I trying to say here? I'm not sure. Get my words mixed up here. If you're not a fan of the show and you're watching this for the first time, you might be a little bit confused by it, but I still think you can go and watch it overall and find some enjoyment to it. But I think if you've been a fan of the show or know more about what the show's about, I think you can definitely get more appreciation out of it if you know more about the show than you do about not knowing the show. That's what I'm basically trying to say here. But, um, so anyway, that's Recess School's Out, so let's go ahead and move on to our last movie, and that is Keanu Reeves and Charlize Theron in Sweet November. So the story centers around a man and woman whose fates are intertwined and will change forever. Yet Keanu Reeves is an avid advertiser living in San Francisco, and one day during a driving test, he meets this girl played by Charlize Theron, a beautiful but seemingly eccentric woman. She's falsely accused of cheating and ends up failing the test because of Nelson, and after getting kicked out of the exam, Sarah waits for him outside and starts to insult him. However, Nelson ignores her and takes off. Then she traces her down and shows up at his place. She promises to leave him alone only if they give her a ride. And later that night, she asks him to live with her through November on the promise that her, his life will change for the better. 
He turns her down saying that he has a girlfriend. On the first day of November, after being fired and dumped on the very same day, Nelson decides to give it a try and then somehow agrees to spend the whole month with Sarah and finds herself in a desperate love affair that he will remember for the rest of his life. Well, it's a good thing he'll remember it because nobody else will remember this movie when it came out. It bombed hard at the box office when it came out and was panned considerably by critics. I mean, this was a film that was completely dismantled by them uh, for a couple of different reasons. One, it was a scene fit one. It's a very smultzy, manipulative, emotionally manipulative, cliched, riddle romantic drama. It has a plot that is so ridiculous and so stupid. And even the elements of the film are so stupid and ridiculous. Um, you know, I remember... Uh, Eben Roper is when Roger Eben and Richard Roper did a review for this particular film. Like I'll never forget how in that review they talk about there's this one scene where you know it's Christmas time and uh, Nelson's bringing up all these presents like Santa Claus and it's like all these crazy different th things and then out of nowhere there's this automatic dishwasher that comes out of the complete nowhere. Like how big is this automatic dishwasher that he's able to climb up a ladder with a inside of a bag and put it inside of a bag? I mean what? sense does that make it all and as you can probably tell if you've seen movies like this or even the remake of this that this is actually based off of it's a movie that's based off of a film with uh sandy dennis in it but um yeah sarah's basically going to die she has can she has terminal cancer not hodgkin's lymphoma it's just like oh no we gotta be so we gotta care so much about this now fuck you <laughs> like i don't usually say the f word on this particular show but sorry fuck you but um that is just I hate it when movies throw that curveball at you, and it's just like, no, it's supposed to completely accept everything that happens beforehand, and I'm sorry, you can't play those games in my book, I mean, if you, it's like, unless you have a really good script to work with here, or characters I can actually get involved with, then I'd be okay with that, but not in this movie, it's a waste of really good talent, a really dumb storyline, bad direction, bad emotional manipulation, it's just... An all-around disaster on so many levels. It's one of the worst movies of the year, bar none. Uh, yeah, avoid this one like the plague. Sweet November. And so well, on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. We'll have two movies we'll look at on the next episode, including 3,000 Miles to Graceland with Kevin Costner and, I believe, Kurt Russell. Let me see if I can get this right. Yeah, Kurt Russell. Uh, Kurt Russell and Kevin Costner. And we also have Brendan Fraser in Monkey Bone. So two films we'll take a look at next time. But until then, uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So with that said, I am off. I will see you guys next time. And until then, as always, take care.